like and subscribe. Serious rural folk, what is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? My brother and I were home alone watching TV. He had an inflatable life-size stone cold wrestler in the basement. When you punched it, it would pop back up and say things like cause stone cold says so. So we are watching TV, and we know it's just us at home when suddenly we hear cause stone cold says so coming from the basement. Very creepy since the thing wouldn't talk on its own. Something had to have moved it, and we were home alone. We both just looked at each other, and ran downstairs to see what was happening. Semicolon. My dog had stone cold horizontal by the waist, and poor stone cold was rapidly deflating, water from the bottom weight dripping into the carpet like clear, white blood. My dog's eyes were glazed over from the glory of the kill, and he'd periodically give stone cold another shake for good measure. You see, my brother had been chasing my dog with stone cold for about two weeks and my dog was very afraid of this inflatable man. I only wish I'd seen him working up the nerve to approach and kill him. R.I.P. Inflatable Stone Cold. I was in northern Wisconsin with my family as a kid. While I was up there I went on a little hike with my brother and dad, just sort of going through some woods. Ended up emerging from the Montesomiano's property, and the dude there saw us, came up with his kid, and asked the obvious I watch you doing on my property? My dad just apologized, and said we were hiking, and that he should not have been so careless. We went back quickly, and while the encounter was odd it did not feel tense or anything. My brother and I also learned a good lesson about respecting private property. However, dude we encountered, was apparently not satisfied, I get it to some degree, if I lived outside an urban area I'd be sus to if someone emerges from the forest onto my property, things got weird though. The guy we encountered actually got some goon who either worked for, or was related to him to track us back to our cabin. About 5 minutes, after we got back, and started to make lunch this goon literally walks inside the cabin, and begins to talk about how we were caught trespassing. He was not yelling, or angry or anything, but it was still pretty jarring, having some camo wearing guy, that you have never seen, before to just barge into your grandparents house. He did not have a lot of time to say much, because our grandparents owned a few guns, mostly antiques though, and sure enough one got pulled on him. Our grandma held this guy up, and actually apologized again for the prior instance of trespassing. Then she started to yell at him though for following us, trespassing on our property, and straight up coming inside uninvited, and then he left. Was a really weird encounter. I've talked to my dad and brother about it on occasion though so it was not a dream or my imagination. Either way, don't it trespass. Fatter is the lesson I learned. Edit, a lot of people are speculating that we stumbled on drugs or something, and tbh I find that unlikely. The guy that talked to my dad gave his name, I certainly don't remember it though, and again had his own son with him. I think it is more likely we <laughs> ed off someone who values property and privacy and they overreacted greatly. Regardless, as others have noted, if you find yourself in a similar situation remain polite, apologize, and get foe. Australia has a reputation for scary animals, but people don't ever talk about the sounds you hear. The cutest, most fluffy, sweet-faced little animals make demon noises in the dark. Our birds scream, possums sound horror movie noises, koalas sound like giant monsters. All of these are completely harmless. Generally the dangerous animals are, coincidentally, the ones you can't hear. I live in a fairly rural part of NJ surrounded by forest and hills. One night in high school my friends and I were driving down one of the local back roads to find a place to chill and smoke. As we are driving, a deer jumps out in front of the car, as they normally do. This time though, as we slowed down the deer turned around back the way it came, walked up to a tree, and then proceeded to bash its head in on the tree in one hit and fall dead. It didn't run into the tree. It walked over, and then slammed its head into it. It was the weirdest behavior we've ever seen. Could have been rabies, but was really freaky. Unsettled all of us, and we decided to go back, and smoke at my friend's house. Also Fox screams. Holy hell does it sound like murder. My uncle used, live way out in the country on a plot he said, was a little less than 8 acres. 
his closest neighbors, weren't terribly far away, within quick driving distance, but also just far enough that walking wasn't very viable. Anyways, I spent my 8th grade summer there, and he had one story that scared the <laughs> out of me back then. He had an array of animals on the farm, three hunting dogs, pigeons, dozens of chickens, other various birds, a few goats and a lone horse, and every night he would make his rounds through his farm, just to make sure everybody was where they were supposed to be, and that everything was locked up. One night as he's walking back to his house, his dogs start going wild. He initially doesn't give care to it, and continues on his way, but his dogs are just relentlessly barking. He points his flashlight around, and doesn't see anything. He gets to the back door of his house, his dog still barking, and so he turns around one last time. Way out in his fields he says he does see what looks like a moving shadow. He automatically assumes it's a coyote or some other wild animal and just goes inside. The next night as he goes out to make his rounds, he said he was immediately stopped as he spotted some sort of shadowy figure just a little distance away from his barn. He didn't say anything but he did take out his gun. Again his initial thought was maybe a coyote trying to get his chickens. However, as he took a few steps, he said the figure suddenly stood up, almost human-like and ran into the field, covered in darkness. He said he was so startled he just froze for a moment, before yelling out hey. He didn't give chase to whatever, or whoever it was. He did say that for about a week after, his dogs would go ballistic at night, but he never saw the figure again. When he was telling me the story, he said that it probably could have just been a transient, but I don't know. The dude lived in the middle of nowhere, and had to drive like 40 minutes to shop. Seems incredibly bizarre for some random homeless to even be in that area. He said it could have also been a black bear, but I don't know either. He wasn't even close to the kind of area I would think black bears inhabit. Dude lived in a rural country farming area, not anywhere remotely close to mountains, forests, etc. One night I grabbed my Sonless Toy Night Vision goggles to see if they even worked. If they did, maybe we could see what was making all the weird howling noises in the woods for the last two nights. So I looked across the yard into the woods and there were so many eyes. So. Many. Eyes. They were everywhere. In one case there was a grouping of three eyes. I had myself convinced it was just a opossum with it as baby and I cold no at see the other eye, but then they all blinked at the same time. I have never ever used my vision to look in the woods again. Whatever deformity was there can have it her space. Okay, this is awful, so. Trigger warnings backslash, edit, kidnapping slash child sexual abuse slash rape. Sorry I didn't put specifics before, it's my first trigger warning, or whatever. It's also a bit long, but that's because there's a lot to this. I still can't believe it all happened. From about age 8 to 11, my family lived in the woods, up in Northern California. We were hippies, sort of, combo hippie slash rednecks. Also, I'm oldish, so when I was a kid, there was no cell phones or internet. There was no cable, and we had no TV, or electricity for that matter, kids would just hang out, for fun, and since this was the 70s, we were mostly unsupervised. One of the kids in the group I hung out with was a kid I knew as Dennis. He was a year older than me, and I liked him, I had my first tiny crush on him, actually. Goofy, quiet but fun, interesting. He taught me to ride a dirt bike, and we used to go cruising around together, me on the back. One day we were riding around, and Dennis said he had to swing by his place to get something. I'd never been to his house, but my brother had, and he came back with stories about Dennis' dad being really creepy, in a sexual way. He liked when Dennis brought his male friends over, but hated when girls came along. He'd give the boys pot and beer, and show them porn. My brother was freaked out, and didn't go there again. On this day, Dennis made me wait outside. He said Ken would be really angry, if I came in. At the time, they lived in a trailer, sort of, in the middle of nowhere up a dirt road, with a tall wire fence, and a dog in the yard outside that barked at me non-stop as I waited for Dennis. Ken stood at the window, and stared at me with an angry, pouty look on his face, it was weird as hell. Dennis eventually came back out, and we left. 
I tried talking to Dennis about his dad, but he shut down, and would not discuss it at all. When I turned 12, we moved, and I lost touch with Dennis. Then, when I was 14 or 15, my mom sat my brother and I down, and said she had something to tell us. She said that the kid we knew as Dennis was actually named Stephen. That the man we thought was his father, Ken, had kidnapped Dennis when he was only 7 years old. He'd told Dennis that his parents didn't want him anymore and had given him to Ken to raise. Dennis was heartbroken but believed it after a while because what else could he do? He was only 7. Ken molested Dennis for 7 years. He raped him and this is a quote from Ken himself thousands of times. I can't even think about it, it makes me so. I'm angry, my friend lived in that hell, the prisoner of a sadistic child rapist. When Dennis was about 14 or so, he was getting too old to be sexually interesting to that psychopath Ken anymore. So Ken went out, and kidnapped another little boy, and brought him home. He dyed the kid's hair, and told Stephen this was his new brother. The kid's name was Timmy White. Ken left to me with Stephen, and went to work one evening. Stephen realized that this is what Ken had done to him, that his parents hadn't given him away, that Ken had kidnapped him, just as he did to me. He wanted to spare to me from the rate he knew was coming, so he took to me, and managed to hitchhike slash walk about 35 miles to the nearest sheriff station in Ukiah. He walked to me in, and then Stephen left, figuring he had nowhere else to go, but a cop saw him, brought him in and talked to him. He said, I know my first name is Stephen. And Ken was arrested. Stephen saved to me, and was a hero, and an amazing person. Ken spent less time in prison than he'd held Stephen for, because the prosecutor didn't bring rape charges, to spare Stephen from having to testify about it. That always <laughs> ed me off. Ken spent so little time in prison, and he was a dangerous <laughs> I'm monster. He did, eventually, try to buy a little boy from his Meals on Wheels caretaker. She went to the police, wore a while, and Ken was finally thrown in prison for life, where he belonged. He's now dead, and I was. I'm thrilled the day he died. The very 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 weird postscript to this, is that years later, when I was in my 30s, Stephen's older brother, Kari, was arrested for the serial killings of four people, two women two teenage girls. You may know about that case, if you're into true crime. I still can't get my head around the fact, that these things happened in one family. And that none of us had a clue what was happening to Steven, back when we all hung out. Edit, Fuluak. I just looked up some news stories, to check that I got details right about time slash ages and stuff. And I found out that when Ken kidnapped Tommy White, he paid a local kid with money and pot, to help him. And the kid did it. He helped Ken kidnap to me. And that kid lived in a trailer on our <laughs> I'm property for a while, and I knew him. His name was Seam Pullman. He did some messed up stuff to me, when I was maybe 10 which I won't get into. He lived there, because my mom was always taking in stray slash troubled people, and offered him the trailer for a while. I'm hell. Used to live in rural Philippines in a tiny fishing village in Tinambacan. Right next to our house was a fenced off lot that had been overgrown, and a really broken down house. It always looked really creepy at night and kids in the neighborhood, told me it was haunted. From our rooftop you could look into the lot. One night I was looking at it, and I saw a strange blue glow coming from inside, and shadows moving across the windows. I cold no place it at all, and did not hear any noise, no people speaking, or any indication of what was causing it. Really scared me. I brought it up to my family, and they told me drag queens were squatting there overnight, so that they could attend a nearby disco. Saw a vertical bar that was relieving. That was probably the last explanation I was expecting, but also a totally awesome one. That abandoned house. It's not haunted. Those aren't ghosts, just drag queens waiting to go to the disco tomorrow. NBD. When I was a child, two of my friends and I decided to explore around an abandoned house that was down the road from us. Typical abandoned house look, paint peeling off everywhere with exposed wood in some spots, plants slash vines overgrown, broken windows, roof tiles missing here and there. 
Well we walked inside, and it matched the outside, cupboards broken, floorboards splintered and cracked. Other than the place being extremely empty, we didn't really get any scary vibes from it. Nothing really stood out to us as paranormal as we'd expect. So we leave the house mildly disappointed. We are walking alongside of one of the windows when this very well dressed, well groomed man, maybe in his 60s wearing a black dress coat, white shirt and black tie comes into view. We didn't see him inside, never heard anything. Yet here was this man just staring at us blankly through the window. Friends and I booked it as fast as we ever ran out of there and back home. It probably was just one of the property owners that just happened to be inside the same day we were. There were a few rooms we didn't go in, but good god that scared the <laughs> out of us lol. A few years later the local fire department burned the place down in a controlled burn. So if it was paranormal. Welp it's gone now lol. Grew up spending a ton of time in the Colorado Rockies. In college a friend and I were on a weekend backpacking trip up in National Forest land, about 300 yards off trail, when we stumbled across a mostly buried bunker someone had made. Think a 20 foot long tough shed, buried up to it earth roof. We only noticed it, because sun glinted off one of two small windows in the roof, which had been deliberately covered with brush slash tree litter. Looking through the windows, we could make out a cot, buckets, and tubs of food and supplies, etc. Found the door, concealed slash partially buried, which had a heavy padlock securing it. Noped out of there with a quickness, did not want to run into whoever had built the place. I live on a road very far away from town. I have neighbors, but I cannot hear them, or see them from my house. My back deck overlooks a field before mics of woods. One night I am out back having a smoke and most likely stoned. I am just chilling in the dark w a little bit of candle light and the light from inside, when I hear a sound, that scared the hell out of me. It was a deep low breathing slash snorting sound. It came from the field, but it sounded like it was right next to me. It gave me chills, and I thought there was a monster in my backyard. It is pitch black, and I cannot see what it is, not that I really wanted to. I went back inside, locked the door and googled the out of it. It was a deer. During their mating season a male deer can make sounds like that. Grew up in a very rural area of Kentucky on a property that was about 75 combined acres of woods and empty fields out a dead end, one lane road. One night when I was a kid I was sent to take the trash out to the dumpster after dark. The dumpster was already at the bottom of the driveway. About the time I reached the dumpster I heard the most blood curdling scream I have ever heard like a woman was being brutally murdered right in my ear. I flew back to the house, and had a full on come apart, crying and telling my dad to get a gun. Fox screams will make your blood run cold. The blood curdling scream of something being killed by coyotes, then all of a sudden it stops, and there's dead silence. Just a few weeks ago just had a black snake wrapped on my outside door knob, when I opened it. I guess it was trying to get to the nest of fly catchers beneath the porch roof. Got stalked by a lone wolf for a few months, that was great, never once aggressive to me though, but he was big. I live on southeast side of a lake in northern Ontario, in the winter when the lake freezes wolves come across the lake from the northwest usually in packs and hunt the local wildlife mostly rabbits I think which are abundant, well one year I guess one wolf didn't make it back across the lake before it melted, we had an early spring thaw, and he was around for the summer. There's no street lights on my road and my friend lives about one kilometer up the road from me, after work we'd go to their place for beers almost daily, to be honest then I'd just walk home after. For weeks I felt, like I was being followed slash stalked, I'd turn around quick and point my flashlight and once, or twice I got a quick glimpse of yellow eyes. At that point I never seen one here in the summer, in the winter yeah going for a rip on a sled sometimes you catch a glimpse in the distance, anyways one night after weeks of this happening I borrowed a trail cam off of a MNR guy we do service work for, put it on the road not far from my buddy's place, after a few days I pick it up and sure a fine enough there was a big black I'm timber wolf following behind me by like 1 to 2 minutes every night. 
This really freaked me out, but I had solar snow in that. If it wanted to attack me it probably would have already. All the same I started driving to my buddy's place instead of hoping a ride and walking back. Until one night I had far more than my usual 2x after work beers I say. It, grab a flashlight out of my truck, and start to walk instead of drinking and driving. I'm walking there's maybe a three quarters moon behind me coming through the trees. It's light enough for me to see without my flashlight, and I have it off as per the norm. I'm about halfway home. I don't see him at first, and it was fast in my mind. All of a sudden his eyes got lit up by the moon behind me. The wolf was walking on the opposite side of the road walking in my direction 15 to 20 feet in front of me. I don't know what the hell made me say it, but I just kept walking and just said, yo as we passed, and the wolf kind of just grunted and carried on. Every year since then there has been a lot less rabbits in our area. I'm guessing he cleared out a lot of the population that summer. Not rural, in the burbs. But my parents house landlocked, which means it does not have direct access to the road. You have to go through someone else's property to access this. Currently, this is a parking lot, that belongs to a park. My parents have kept their property natural. Means they despise yard work, so they basically have a house in the middle of the woods next to a park. I was coming home one night a few years ago. It was dark. Between 10 to 11 p.m. I come around the corner to come up the driveway and immediately slam on the brakes. There was this tall thing coming out of the darkness right next to the driveway and it was moving. It was taller than my car and super skinny. I I thought Slenderman was coming for me. As I sat there in shock, my eyes adjusted. It was a blue heron. A big giant bird. It had come up from the creek at the park looking for food, I guess. Scared the hell out of me. People assume living in the country is quiet and peaceful. It is peaceful, but rarely quiet. A pack of coyotes howling can sound like crying babies. I know what it is but it still freaks me out when I am home alone at night. I live in a countryside. Recently there's always dead dogs in my land. I'm not sure if this a coincidence or something else but someone is killing healthy dogs and dumping the body just like that. It's not a great sight. The smell is really bad, the dogs look bloated, and it looks like their eyes came out of the socket. If they are pit bulls, it is probably dog fighters. Live out in the country, realized one night that we never got the mail that day, so I walked out to the road to get it. No moon that night, so it was pitch black, just the sound of crickets and tree frogs. As I'm walking back up the driveway, I hear my husband whistling, from the direction it's coming from it seems he walked out the back door, and was coming around the side of the house towards me. I didn't know why, and didn't bother to ask, I just went up on the porch, and back in the front door. Just then my husband came out of the bathroom. I still get freaked out a little, when I think about it. It was 100% a human whistling a tune and both humans were in the house. When I had just gotten my first car I was driving home one night around 10pm. I came around a corner on a very dark back road and my headlights shined onto a large stake that someone set up on the curb with a deer's head shoved on top. I was nervous the rest of the way home after that. I saw a cougar in person once and it was terrifying. Probably less than 10 feet away. If y'all have never seen a cougar before, y'all are imagining it too small. Fear are just shy of 8 feet long on average and their whole body is muscle. Not muscle like a bull mind you, but like a tightly coiled wire. Biggest meanest looking animal I had ever seen in the wild, and it was completely silent as it went past us. We just stood still for a good couple minutes, after it got out of sight. Finding Fark's fire beneath my tent. I shrieked. It looked like a stick completely covered with glowworms. A friend of mine lived in a semi-rural area growing up. One night the cops knocked on her door and warned her that they were looking for a possibly violent fugitive. Told her they'd check her property and that she should lock up and be wary. It wasn't until some time later that she found out the full story. The fugitive had been caught sexually assaulting a horse in a local stable. In the ensuing panic, 
the horse's leg was broken, and the man got away. He was found two days later hiding in a storm watered rain. So I live in the city, but I'd call myself quite an accomplished outdoorsman, when I can get away from the city life. A few years ago, I loaded a bunch of camping gear onto my bicycle, and spent the better part of the next 7 months riding 5,300 miles, 8,500 kilometers, around the US. At night, I most often preferred to wild camp, simply finding somewhere to disappear into the woods, somewhere people were unlikely to find me, and even less likely to care, that I was there. It ended up being one of my favorite parts of the whole trip, just finding some secluded spot in the woods to get some much needed rest. But the forest, I quickly learned, is not a quiet place at night. There's always some form of noise. The chirping of thousands of crickets becomes a constant drone throughout the night, accompanied by many toads. There would always be at least a slight breeze through the trees, or the babbling of a nearby creek. It was always a highlight of my nights so although not particularly unor morno to hear the distant yips and howls of coyotes, and I fondly look back on the one night where two owls, one on either end of my tent, called back and forth through much of the night. After a month or so of this, I became quite accustomed to the nighttime sounds of the forest, and it became very comforting. So it was quite a shock to my system when one night in rural Montana, I realized I was struggling to sleep, because of the exact opposite of what keeps most people up. That night, it wasn't the noise, that was keeping me awake, but rather the complete lack of any noise. It was dead silent. And that was an incredibly unnerving experience. I can only describe it as the loudest silence I've ever heard. It almost felt, as if the entire forest was hiding from an equally silent predator. Suddenly the occasional snapping of a twig or a common sound, that would normally get, lost in the cacophony of the forest or sounded like a gunshot. I slept terribly that night, and morning could not come soon enough. My little brother and I were tossing a baseball around near dusk at the bottom of our property, 30 wooded mountain acres way in the middle of nowhere. It had gotten dark enough that we were asterisk JUSG asterisk about to call it quits when we heard the single most horrifying scream we've ever heard, before or since, from the trees just beyond the edge of the clearing. Imagine a woman screaming in mortal agony, writhing in the most wretched torment imaginable, every tortured scream from horror movies, war movies, anything you've ever heard, nothing compared to this. Even now, decades removed from hearing it, the hair on my arms and neck stands up just thinking of it, and it's made even worse by the realization of asterisk WHAT it actually WAS asterisk. A mountain lion. Full grown female mountain lions scream loudly, when they are in heat, and it sounds like a human woman being torn to pieces by the devil himself. To hear that, two kids alone in the dark in the middle of nowhere, was about as terrifying as it gets. I had just turned 16, and was driving home in the middle of nowhere at night on a back road that had trees on both sides. At one part in the road, the tree line on the left side briefly clears. When I got to that part of the road, I saw five large, almost perfect circles of fiery yellowish orange light high in the sky just hovering. Two were close to each other more to the left, and the other three were aligned more to the right, but all were relatively close. No movement from them. No sound, nothing. Again, these were large glowing circles. They looked nothing like the dot of light you would see from an aircraft or anything. After about 15 seconds of driving, the tree line got dense again, so the sky was one again blocked from my view. I was about 30 seconds from the end of the road, and as I reached the end and the trees cleared again, I had about another 10 seconds worth of viewing the mysterious lights, before they got slightly brighter, and then disappeared pretty much instantly and simultaneously. To this day I still, have no idea what I saw. Again, this was in the middle of nowhere hours from any major city. No known military facilities or government entities or anything like that nearby. I have rattled my brain on every logical theory possible, fireworks, missile tests, meteors, military aircraft, etc. None of them make sense. The whole experience was so eerie in the fact, that it is still unexplained weirds me out to this day. I showed up at a friend's house once as I did almost every day after school, like 13 years old. 
I rode my bike everywhere. I usually left it by the side of her pool in her backyard, but as I'm pulling up she starts waving at me from her front porch. Her parents had gotten upset with us for leaving our bikes up there before but neither of their cars is in the driveway, so I cruise up, and we head inside. She immediately locks the door and calls 911. She had been up in her room looking for me to arrive, as she usually did apparently, and spotted a man lurking behind their pool, very near where I usually drop my bike. I was almost kidnapped or like. Anything, I don't know. The guy booked it, when the cops arrived, and they didn't find him. My family lives in an old farmhouse, surrounded by a lake, field and forest. No neighbors nearby. No reason for outsiders being near, it's a dead end road. This happened to my aunt, when she was dog sitting. She wakes up in the middle of the night to some noises. Our dog was less than helpful to our dog, and she didn't alert her at all. Aunt sees several people outside with flashlights, walking around the yard. She panics and immediately puts on all the lights and the people escape. She called the cops, but it would have taken them an hour to get there. Nothing was taken that sure scared the hell out of my aunt. Tornadoes. Them things are kinda sketchy. Seeing a town one day, and then it's gone the next is kinda eerie. Town was taken down by a ref 4 tornado. Tornadoes are really interesting though. They are fun to watch, but the sound they make, is kinda creepy too. Behind my house, was miles of woods, until they chopped it down for a neighborhood. 20 feet behind my house, is a steep drop off, or a mild cliff into a valley with a creek in it. Very steep on both sides. So this valley has been left as forest in between neighborhoods. When I was little we saw all kinds of wildlife in our yard we stopped seeing turkeys completely, and less deer after the new neighborhood. Tons of rabies too until the bigger animals stopped coming around. This is all backstory. I only let one dog out to pee in the backyard on a leash, because she can escape anything given time, while the other is chained to a runner, that runs the length of the yard, but she is a good girl, and doesn't need supervision. So at night it has always been creepy to walk out to the edge of the woods, just so the dog can pee. Last summer my sister, and I kept hearing something over the hill, and felt like we were being watched. The motion sensor light in our yard was always on by the time went outside too. We both thought we were being paranoid, so we didn't tell the either our thoughts. Eventually I broke Dawson, and told her we were being watched from over the hill, and she said she FSLT the same way. We both agreed the presence felt negative and angry. We started taking the dogs out with bats and knives and pepper spray. We could not figure out what was watching us. Whatever it was got bolder and bolder. We started to hear it more frequently. By the way it sounded we both estimated its size as at least that of a large dog. Sometimes we heard a grunt or two. This only happened at night. The dogs would silently whip their heads towards the sounds and just watch. Normally they bark at that kind of stuff. I was glad though, because one dog is 12 and needs a leg brace to walk, while the escaping one is a chihuahua mix so, if they started a fight they would lose. This went on 4 weeks. It started that we felt, like we were being watched in the daytime too. We even started, hear sounds at day, we never once thought this presence felt human. There are coyotes in the area. There are bears too, but they are so rare they make the news when sighted. Mountain lions are extinct in my area, so it was possible, that some found their way back to this territory, but it was unlikely. One day I'm letting the dogs out, but I'm not too on guard as daytime visits were still much rarer. Then I hear a large object moving through the brush and a grunt. My stomach drops, that was the closest I ever heard it. I pick up my dog as slowly as possible, and start to turn towards the house to evacuate, when I catch sight of a herd of 5 or 6 deer on the cliff staring me down. They look downright murderous. I have seen deer my whole life, but I never saw one look so angry. It had been in the news a year before, that a single deer killed someone nearby, they were dumb, and didn't respect the deer's space. My house was stalked by a herd of deer for weeks lol. My family throws expired produce out of the back door over the cliff, the yard is shallow, and you can make the throw from inside, to avoid compostable materials sitting in a landfill. 
That's why the deer were hanging out, we had a buffet for them. We stopped that real quick, and they only hung around for a few more days. It might sound dumb that we never put this behavior together with the visitor, but we had done that our whole lives, and forgot about it the moment it was launched over the hill. The end result was pretty funny, but the build up was creepy. TLDR, my sister and I feel like we are being stalked by an animal every night. After weeks of the stalker getting bolder and closer we realize it was just an angry herd of deer lol. Explainable story. When the neighbors kept finding deer dragged into trees and eaten it started to bother everyone. Neighbor kids, I included, and what not kept seeing, neighbors pulling them out of trees. Very unnatural. Turned out it was a mountain lion. Very surreal. When my brother and I were kids, 7 to 9 age range, there was an abandoned house where I'd poke around near occasionally, this was in the 90s so still in the wild west childhood territory. One day we were brave enough to knock on the root cellar door. I will never forget the immediate sharp bangs on the door back at us. I don't think either of us have ran that fast since. I used to live in the desert for a year, and on nights when the moon ice not out or there are clouds blocking out the stars and moon it is almost pitch black, you cannot see more than 10 yards ahead of you. One night I was driving down the highway going home, and then suddenly in my headlights I see a guy running on the side of the highway full on sprinting. I am going 70 miles per hour so it is only for a second or two but I am. Like what the hell was he running from? I hope hell is okay, because I am not pulling over mayo, but then maybe a minute later I see another guy in my headlights only hell is walking on the side of the highway, and I swear to god it looked like the same guy, two separate guys in the dark walking slash running on the side of the highway. What possible reason could explain that, I did not see any cars on the side of the road, that might have broken down, I was so weirded out I just had an uncomfortable feeling the entire ride home. A mountain lion stalking me in the woods on a midnight hike. I turned my flashlight on, and it scared it away, and my brother shot a round of his 45 into grounder about 6 feet away. Then we went home paranoid to death. There is an old trick that people in India do. They have a mask that looks like a face with big eyes, and they wear it backwards with the mask part on the back of their heads, so that way anything behind you thinks you are looking at it. It's meant to protect against mountain lions stalking you. Figured I add this into my post. It might help someone, and if not it's at least a cool fact. I was in western Washington hiking on a forestry road. It was Mayish. Time frame. Snow still in patches as it was about 6, 000 hour elevation. Walking along, beautiful day, by myself, and all of a sudden I got one of the coldest chills I have ever had in my life. You know the feeling, chicken skin, feeling of WTF, and fear of unknown. Walk a bit further, and as I approach a patch of snow there was a set of very large mountain lion prints. They were pretty fresh, but walking the same way as me. I walked back to my car walking backwards. It was maybe 200 to 250 yards to my car, walked the whole way back backwards, so he slash she cold nerd sneak up on me. I know it was watching me. I never went up there again without at least another person. Usually more of the stuff you can hear, but can't see that does it for me. Once you see it, and know what's making the sound it's usually less worrisome. Along the same vein, I suggest having P. S around your yard, just to mess with visitors. They make some very weird, very loud noises. I live in the countryside in the UK, just about as far away from any city or town you can get. It's all very flat farmland. I go for a lot of walks through all the fields. Last summer I went for a long walk, and was about 3 miles from my house. It was super hot that day, around 33. C. 91. F. I was walking past this one field that was full of crops ready to harvest, no idea what kind of crop it was, but it was about waist high, bright yellow and looked amazing. So I stopped, and got out my phone to take some pictures. I stood there for about 5 minutes messing around trying to get some cool pics and videos for Instagram. Then carried on walking. 
About 30 seconds later I looked back across the field, and saw what looked like a person dressed in black, standing in the middle of this field of yellow. At first I thought it was a scarecrow, that I just didn't notice when taking those pictures. As maybe it had blended in with the trees in the distance behind this field. I got my phone out, and was looking through the pictures, zooming in and trying to see, if I could see the scarecrow. And of course, I couldn't. I kept walking with this field to the right of me. And took a right turn with the field still to my right. What I thought was a scarecrow, started walking. So now this figure was a person. A person dressed in all black on this really hot summer's day, hot for the UK long. They started walking towards the spot I had originally stopped at to take pictures. And eventually got there and just stood there themselves. I kept walking, until I was far away enough, that I couldn't see them anymore. It just freaked me out, as there was no reason for someone to be walking through this field. Only the farmers ever do it as it was full of crops. I was walking on the tractor roads in between each field. Part of me thinks this person had to have been laying down in this field whilst I was taking the pictures. As there was no way they got to the middle of the field in the 30 seconds I looked away. I couldn't tell if they were looking at me. But I really feel like they were as they just stood there. I don't know, it was just a weird thing to see. Considering I was 3 miles from the nearest house, with no other people nearby, I've never seen a single person just randomly walking through a farmer's field before or since then. Just felt like a scene from Jeepers Creepers. We were off-roading a couple of years up near the Canadian border, followed some power lines for a ways, when we decided to stop and check out a giant bird's nest atop one of the junctions. Heard a noise behind us, and noticed a group of ATV riders on the next hill behind us. Not unusual for that area, what was unusual was the guns strapped to their backs, not hunting rifles, machine gun style, and they were staring back with binoculars. We jumped back in the jeep, and start to head back to our family cabin, check back and yes they are following us, and trying to catch up. The kid driving just nails it, our cell phones are useless up here, we have no protection, we only have speed on our side. We sped down dirt roads, that have never been maintained, and somehow managed to get the jeep parked far enough in our driveway and pull enough brush in front, to cover it and hid ourselves. When they roared past we noticed they were all dressed in green, covered in weird insignia patches, that we didn't recognize, and carrying guns, like they were ready for some intense combat, no idea what they were doing or training for. Near the Canadian border, they were all dressed in green covered in weird insignia patches. You'll ever hear a border patrol? Grew up in the hills out in the country. We own a ton of land including a ridge and a large hill. One day me and my cousins were deep in the woods and walked up on an old bloody white shirt hanging off a tree. We thought it may have been from hunting because it almost looked like a rat. But we looked around more and found a pair of shoes. Then a pair of socks, shorts and underwear in a rolled freezer bag covered in mold and dirt. Looked like petite women's clothing. We got our uncles out there, and they blew it off, until they saw it. They left it where we found it, and told us to stay out of the woods for a while. No one really talked about it after. Looking back that seems extremely suspicious. I once saw a hog rubbing its butt at a tree. Like, actually twerking. Depending on the beholder, this is a bouncy or stupid story I can throw in the mix of all these clothes and animal encounters on here. I lived out of a camper shell I built on the back of a small Japanese pickup I own. Did this with some breaks of couch surfing in between for about 8. 5 months, east to west coast and lots of places in between. I was doing some work on a guy's house in Sonora, California. He and his family were the coolest of Mormons, and they actually offered that I just park anywhere I like on their 8 acres of property until we got their house finished up to be put on the market. Having a stable campsite I changed things up and would sleep in my hammock beside my truck. Weather was perfect that time of year. The guy's wife saw me in my hammock on the first morning and made it a point to tell me about the two goats they had lost to a mountain lion the year prior. One day at dusk, while I was there she and her son got a mountain lion walking up the driveway on video. It was back. 
I knew the risk, but figured it was far too scared of human smells and lights and sounds to have realistically mean problems for me, which is the case for 99% of those cats. Just be noisy before bed and yeah set. After lights out at night I'd sit and browse the web for a while in the cab of my truck and I could charge my electronics from the inverter I had in there. I was not done going in and out of the camper shell in the bed of my truck, so I had left both tailgate and hatch wide open. It was well into the night, I am just reading away, and all of a sudden my entire truck lurches from a dip in the rear end. Something's in the back of my truck. I have shuttled people around back there, and I have a good sense of how the release springs do underweight in this truck, because I have owned it for so long, and it was as if a slightly less than or equal to 200 pound man plopped his on my tailgate. Oh. First thought is it is a person. Did not think it at the time, but there is no way it is a person, impact on crushed gravel that gives away the approach of anything putting body weight on it. Unless this person was being intentionally sneaky, but that gets thrown to the wind with a jump onto the tailgate. So it was not a dude. A useless wide-eyed check of my mirrors sent me thinking of a better plan. I am not getting out of the cab. Manually lock both doors. Old truck, my keys are already on accessory to run charging, so less than an eighth of a turn of the key in the truck is running. I read the thing in accordance with my heart rate, but I don't blast the horn, because I don't want to wake this family and their five young kids up. Plan works and the truck springs back up unweighted. The noise did scare the cat. But a mountain lion, at night, did pounce into the back of my truck. I shut the truck off, and waited things out a good while. All clear. The balsy slash stupid part comes now. I was 21, this was my adventure I had dreamed about, since I was a kid, I don't have wild behaviors, but I honestly feel all but dead inside, until I face some kind of challenge or adversity and I'll come alive. Grew up watching too many movies or something. All my favorites share the common theme. Anyway, I did not want to back down, slight dehydration was on my side, and I knew my was going to smell a little stronger because of it. I it all over the trees my hammock was strapped to, and underneath and in a little sea bear circle around the hammock itself. And I did that every night for the next two weeks with no problem, until we finished the job. It was balsy then, but it was stupid now. The reality though is that anyone who sleeps outdoors in their habitat for any amount of days more than one out of the year, has slept in a mountain lion's territory. Likely under one. In terms of hillside not trees. The consensus around them is, that they see you, you don't see them. Could have told that story so much shorter, but it is true, and storytelling is a lot of fun. This ask turned into our old campfire stories quick. I live in a home kill farm growing up. We farmed animals for slaughter, and slaughtered them ourselves to order. Now this isn't creepy or where it for me and my family, but sure was for the people who got lost, and came up the drive asking for directions. The dad my granddad had a large order to fill. He had about 10 dead, and skinned sheep in the shed, and was about to then start the next. Standing over a sheep with a sharp knife. With me as an 8 year old moving the sheep guts out of the way, when people come up the drive to ask for directions. We were both covered in blood. Reckon it scared them pretty good, but was just another day for us. You've been visited by the ghost of a very important man. Pay your respects by liking and subscribing, and he'll grant you three weeks of good luck.